This video is sponsored by War Thunder. As Major Kim Campbell flew over Baghdad in March of 2003, she pointed her aircraft's gun at an enemy attacking an American position full of troops. Flying low over the target area, she suddenly heard and felt a loud bang on the back of her aircraft. She'd been hit. Luckily, Major Campbell was flying one of America's sturdiest airplanes, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II. The A-10 is capable of working without hydraulics and has a 1,200-pound titanium aircraft armor that protects it from even the most powerful surface-to-air missile. And despite being a slow vehicle, with a top speed of 420 miles per hour, it is most definitely not a delicate aircraft. Built with maneuverability and simplicity in mind, the so-called Warthog has survived repeated attempts by the U.S. Congress to retire it, remaining on the United States Air Force's good side for over 50 years and becoming an iconic aircraft of the modern era. Experience the A-10 Warthog's maneuverability and sturdiness as you recreate and reshape air battles of the past and today in War Thunder, the most comprehensive online military vehicle combat game we've ever played. Click on the link in the description below to experience this free-to-play online game on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Access over 2,000 historically accurate tanks, fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters, and warships, including the A-10 Warthog. Each is modeled to incredible detail down to their individual components, spanning over a hundred years of technological developments from the 1920s to today. We love the insane attention to historical accuracy, and we were immediately immersed in the intuitive and easy to control gameplay. Click on the link below to fight players on a hundred different battlefields where massive ground, air, and sea forces clash for the ultimate reward, victory. Put your commanding and tactical abilities to the test with realistic game modes that make War Thunder the ultimate war simulator. The Dark Docs team has been particularly impressed by the highly detailed models of aircraft and warships, which truly pay homage to their real-life counterparts. Immersive gameplay, historical accuracy, beautiful graphics, and unparalleled realism makes War Thunder the ultimate fighting simulator. Click now to take advantage of an exclusive offer for Dark Skies viewers before it's too late. New players will earn a seven-day account boost and a premium tank, aircraft, and warship. Good luck, Captain. Close Air Support After two decades of prioritizing faster and higher flying fighters and bombers for a potential war with the nuclear-powered Soviet Union, the U.S. Air Force had no slow-moving, low-flying, and resilient enough aircraft for close air support on the Vietnamese battlefields. America's leading ground attack aircraft in the earlier days of the Vietnam War was the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. Introduced only a year after World War II, the Sky Raider could carry a large payload, but its propeller-driven design was outdated by the 1960s. The aircraft simply could not fly slow enough to spot targets in the middle of the jungle and didn't have enough fuel storage to make multiple passes. Also, it was vulnerable to ground fire. A 1966 Air Force study confirmed such gaps and concluded that the service was in need of a simple and inexpensive design for close air support. In September of that year, U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General John P. McConnell ordered the design, development, and production of a rugged and survivable close air support aircraft to protect combat troops on the ground, and the winning proposal came from Fairchild Republic. The winner was chosen because of its dramatic low-altitude maneuverability, weapon accuracy, survivability, and mission-capable maintainability. Two YA-10 prototypes were flown for the first time on May 10, 1972, by pilot Howard Nelson. Then, after several trials, the Air Force approved Fairchild Republic's prototype for production. The first A-10 flew in October of 1975, and deliveries commenced six months later. Warthog the model, renamed Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, is a single-seat, twin-turbofan, straight-wing, subsonic attack aircraft. In service since the mid-1970s, it is named as a successor to the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, a World War II-era bomber known for its ground-target accuracy. Still, the Thunderbolt II is commonly called the Warthog for its aggressive look and white claws often painted on its nose cone. 
The aircraft is the only production-built U.S. Air Force warplane designed solely for close air support, performing missions near friendly troops, attacking enemy armored vehicles, tanks, and other targets. In addition, it has excellent maneuverability for high accuracy and a slow top speed of only 420 miles per hour. Capable of taking off and landing from short runways and a wide combat radius, the Warthog can operate from airstrips close to the front lines, and the attack aircraft can loiter near battle areas for long periods, and even run in low ceiling and visibility conditions because of its ample fuel capacity. With an unusual design that prioritized resiliency, redundancy, and function over everything else, the Thunderbolt II's simple design enables fairly basic maintenance, and it can be both serviced and operated from austere bases with limited facilities near battlefields. Also, many of its parts are interchangeable. The warplane's airframe has a 1,200-pound titanium armor to protect the cockpit and all its systems. The armor can absorb heavy damage by shielding the pilot and control system from enemy fire, enabling it to continue flying. Power The aircraft's two General Electric TF-34GE-100A turbofan engines are mounted high up on the long fuselage to protect them from sucking in the dirt on rudimentary runways. And although the A-10 can carry a wide variety of conventional munitions, including general-purpose bombs, cluster bomb units, and laser-guided bombs, the aircraft's primary built-in weapon is the 30mm GAU-8A Avenger autocannon. One of the world's most powerful cannons to ever exist, the weapon can fire up to 3,900 rounds of depleted uranium armor-piercing shells per minute. The first production Warthog was delivered to the davis monthan Air Force Base in Arizona in the mid-1970s, proving to be an unwelcome addition to the warplane arsenal at first, as most fighter pilots favored speed and appearance. Still, with its combination of large and varied ordnance load, long loiter time, accurate weapons delivery, austere field capability, and survivability, the Thunderbolt II soon became an invaluable asset for the United States and its allies. Operational Service After stagnating for almost two decades, the Warthog first saw combat during the 1991 Gulf War, deploying 132 models. It was during this time that Captain Robert Swain achieved the type's first air-to-air -air victory when he shot down an Iraqi helicopter. During the 40-day-long conflict, the A-10 Warthog had a mission-capable rate of 95.7%, flying over 8,000 sorties and launching 90% of the missiles fired in the entire war. Soon, the Air Force decided not to replace the decades-old A-10 with a newer version. Then, as the Bosnian War raged on, the Warthog was assigned to a series of sorties launched to locate and destroy equipment and heavy weapons seized by Bosnian Serbs. The A-10s eventually returned to the Balkan region as part of Operation Allied Force in Kosovo in 1999. During the conflict, several A-10s escorted and supported search and rescue missions, but they soon began to receive more ground attack missions, remaining in action until the combat ended in late June. The Warthogs then arrived at Bagram Air Base, Afghanistan in March of 2002, just in time for Operation Anaconda, in which CIA paramilitary officers and its allies attempted to destroy Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces in the area. The aircraft also took part in the Iraq War, beginning with Operation Iraqi Freedom on March 20th, 2003, with 60 models taking part in early combat, where the model had a mission-capable rate of 85%. After that, the A-10 has taken part in numerous operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and other parts of the Middle East. A manual landing. The A-10's armor was put to the test on April 7, 2003, when Major Kim Campbell, tasked to pinpoint Iraqi targets, received a call from the forward air controller asking for immediate assistance against enemy fire. Once over the target area, Major Campbell descended below the clouds to identify the friendly troops as well as the enemy's location, who were firing rocket-propelled grenades at the Americans. In a high-threat situation, Campbell and her fellow A-10 partner made several two-ship formation passes over the enemy, accurately firing the autocannon and high-explosive rockets. Then, as she maneuvered away from the target after her last rocket pass, Campbell heard a large explosion at the tail end of her warthog. Campbell later recalled the incident during a ceremony, quote, As we were on our way out is when I felt the jet get hit. It was pretty obvious. It was loud. I lost all hydraulics instantaneously, and the jet rolled left and pointed toward the ground, which was an uncomfortable feeling over Baghdad. It didn't respond to any of my control inputs. 
Despite trying out several procedures to control the aircraft, none of them worked. As such, Major Campbell put the fighter into manual reversion and began to fly the plane without hydraulics. The aircraft is designed to be able to fly with just one engine, half of the tail, one elevator, and half of a wing missing. And in manual reversion mode, the Thunderbolt II fighter is sufficiently controllable to return to base. Still, the control forces are more significant than usual, and achieving a landing without hydraulics is exceptionally tricky. Thankfully, Campbell's aircraft responded and started to climb away from the ground and out of war-ridden Baghdad, helped over the radio by her flight leader, Lieutenant Colonel Turner. She then flew the crippled plane all the way back to the airbase. Campbell was able to land the Warthog, even as the brakes and steering didn't work without hydraulics. Upon inspection, it was discovered that her A-10 had sustained damage to one engine, as well as the redundant hydraulic systems, disabling all flight controls, landing gear, brakes, and horizontal stabilizers. The aircraft had bullet holes all over the airframe. Major Campbell was later awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for her bravery in aerial combat. According to General Richard Myers, the U.S. Air Force's Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Campbell is one of only a handful of pilots who have ever landed the Warthog in the manual mode. The Future According to Boeing, over 280 Thunderbolt II models remain in service with the U.S. Air Force, Air Combat Command, Air Force Reserve, and the Air National Guard. While initial plans called to the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II to replace the A-10 gradually after entering service in 2015, Several critics believe that this move would be a giant leap backward for the Air Force, given the A-10's performance and the F-35's hefty price tag. To this day, the future of the attack platform remains a subject of debate. Still, despite several thwarted attempts by the U.S. Congress to phase out the almost 50-year-old warplane, the U.S. Air Force has planned a wide range of cockpit, weapons, and avionics upgrades to keep its remaining warthogs in the air well into the 2040s. Thank you for watching our video, and thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring it. Don't forget to click on the link in the description to play for free and claim your 7-day boost and a premium tank, aircraft, and warship. Remember that no extra hardware is required. A controller or a mouse and keyboard are more than enough to get you in the middle of the action. See you on the land, in the sea, and in the air.